Welcome to ElvisPresleyMuseum.com. Hi, I'm Jimmy Velvet, founder of the original Elvis Presley Museum in Memphis, Tennessee, directly across the street from Graceland. In 1955, my substitute English teacher lived down the street from me on Dalewood Avenue in Jacksonville, Florida. She was also a show promoter and was working on the Hank Snow Show at the Gator Bowl directly from the Grand Ole Opry. Wow, what a show! But the thing was, it had the Carter family on there, and I wanted to meet June Carter. So I went down to Ms. Zaxton's house and talked her into letting me backstage. Boy, that was something to get back there. But while I was back there, I was talking to this guitar player, and he was just tuning his guitar and playing a little bit around and so on. And he stuck his hand out and said, oh, by the way, my name's Elvis Presley. I thought, what in the world? Who has a name like Elvis Presley? <laughs> and anyway, but when he went on stage, he absolutely stole the show. The police couldn't even hold the crowd back. Oh, by the way, my English teacher was Mae Axton, co-writer of Heartbreak Hotel. And her son, Hoyt, became very well known as a singer, songwriter, and actor. He was at the show, and it was at this show also when I decided I wanted to enter into the world of entertaining and start down my own path. Now, I was only 16 and Elvis was 20, but we exchanged phone numbers, stayed in touch, and remained friends for 22 years until his untimely death in 1977. You're probably wondering how this ties in with my museum. Well, I was on tour with my band in 1978, and we were booked in Memphis. After my first show, I went to my room at the hotel where we were appearing to change for my second show, and I had the TV on in the room, and I heard on the news that the city of Memphis was thinking about opening an Elvis museum. Well, that weighed heavy on my mind as I strongly felt that they should have already had the plan in motion. Halfway through my show, I decided to stop touring opened a museum myself, and much to my surprise, and the surprise of my band, I announced that that show would be my last, and I would be opening an Elvis Presley museum as a tribute to my friend, Elvis Presley. The next morning, I went to see Vernon, Elvis's father, and told him my ideas about opening a museum to honor Elvis, and that would be located directly across the street from Graceland. Vernon was thrilled with the idea and gave me his blessing. A couple of weeks later, on June 1st, 1978, I opened the first Elvis Presley Museum with 20 or so items that Elvis had given me throughout our years of friendship. At first, the museum was called the Elvis Mini Museum. It was very small and ambition was only a dollar. I was amazed at how quickly the museum was growing with lines of people out the door seven days a week, morning to night. Within a few months, I changed the name to simply the Elvis Presley Museum, which I incorporated and trademarked the name. The museum was so successful that in one conversation with Vernon, we discussed transforming Graceland into a museum, and Vernon was excited over the prospect. Unfortunately, Vernon passed away that very same year before we could put the plan into motion. But EPE, Elvis Presley Enterprises, opened Graceland to the public about four years after I opened my first museum. What a grand way to honor Elvis. Back then, so many people told me I was crazy for continuing to buy Elvis's personal items because he wouldn't be remembered in a year or so. Well, I knew that they were wrong because Elvis was a legend and legends never die. In less than a year, I had to buy a larger building to house a museum because my collection had more than tripled. I opened additional museums outside of Memphis, in Honolulu, 1982, Orlando in 1984, and Nashville in 1985. After three months of being in business, I started getting requests for the museum to tour all over the USA and other countries. It has been an incredible journey bringing Elvis to the fans for so many years. However, as with everything in life, things change and the world of collecting took on different measures. In 1994, I held an incredible auction hosted by Butterfield and Butterfield at the Las Vegas Hilton of 609 of my personally owned Elvis items. The auction was spread worldwide and was a huge success. The world of collecting Elvis items soared to great heights, which brings me to why I'm here. This is a new season in life for me as I slow down in this business 
pass along the baton to my dear friend Daniel Johnson as he continues on the legacy here at ElvisPresleyMuseum.com. I've known Daniel for many years and watched him work within the realm of collecting Elvis-owned items with truth, honesty, and integrity. So please come back to ElvisPresleyMuseum.com where I will be sharing more stories and memories of Elvis and talking about some of the incredible artifacts. Thanks again for visiting ElvisPresleyMuseum.com and I look forward to seeing you again.